Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you, as always, for watching. And um, it's got a couple of things tonight that I'm working on. First, I've got to come up with a way to clamp this panel right here to the nose, to the bow. And uh, I mentioned earlier in another video, I think it was in my last video, that when I bonded this panel in place, I had access to this empty bay right here. I uh, won't have that same access now, so I'm going to have to come up with a different way to clamp this piece in place. And uh, I do apologize for the lighting out here. It is 1030 at night and uh, getting a little bit of a weird glare off of my spotlight right there out in my yard. But um, I'm going to have to come up with a way to clamp this down while the epoxy sets up and that's what this is all about right here I will go into more detail on this later because I'm kind of uh, designing it on the fly second thing and I also mentioned this in the last video and uh, got to get this drain line uh, installed uh, I mentioned that I needed a, a drain line running from this compartment all the way back to a uh, garber drain plug that I'm going to put at the bottom of the stern back there at the bottom of the transom and I'm going to uh, go to Home Depot tomorrow and I'm going to buy uh, some of this uh, CPVC pipe in this half inch diameter that's what I plan to run I just just don't have enough I only had just a little small piece of it that's what I used to uh, make these little drain tubes right here but um, I need uh, Oh gosh, about a nine foot piece of that to run all the way to the uh, transom back there. So that's what I'm working on tonight. I'm not going to do any cutting or displacing of any uh, plywood tonight just because everyone's in the house and they're sound asleep. So we are in a uh, silent running mode right now. I uh, just don't want to run any power tools, wake everybody up. But, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, like I said on, on this clamp right here, you'll know when I know what that thing's going to look like and how it's going to work. Uh, like I said, I'm just kind of uh, designing this thing on the fly, but uh, it is going to... That piece is actually going to go across here. And again, man, it's dark down there, boy. Let me find some better light. I may have to do this tomorrow. Okay, maybe from that angle. Uh, that piece will go across uh, the uh, stringer and the keel beam right where my hand's at and uh, then I'm going to have to come up with a way to actually um, probably uh, I'm going to attach some pieces of a little 2x4, two 2x3 two to it out, out here somewhere and uh, then use my just those big furniture clamps I've been using and clamp it down and hold that uh, panel in place while that epoxy sets up so that's it that is all for tonight I will catch you in the next segment all right folks good morning and welcome back and uh, remember I talked about having to lay a drain line in here at the bottom of the boat in order to uh, make a compartment drain right here and that's what I'm doing this morning as I am uh, scalloping out some material at each one of these ribs I just got started here at the bulkhead and uh, I'm moving on to uh, the rest of the ribs and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get each one of those ribs cut out until we get back here and then uh, I'll stop here and I have a, a drain plug that bolts into the back right here and I think it's in my truck right now otherwise I'd show it to you. And there go the planes on the approach path again. Wait until he goes by. I don't know if it's FedEx or Amazon. Don't really care. But anyway, like I said, I have a drain that will bolt into the back here, and I will have to install it after I get the fiberglass on. But uh, that's it. Uh, that's what I got going on this morning. Okay, so that is what I was talking about right there. I basically just had to dig a trench for that uh, drain tube to lay into. I mean, walk up here. 
show you a little bit more there. Got all those carved out. Yeah, and like I said, that is for, and that's not trimmed to length yet, but that's for this tube to lay into. Just a standard piece of uh, plastic water pipe from Home Depot. And then I've got to come back here. Here's that drain I was telling you about. And I've already marked off where it's going to be drilled right there. And that's going to get installed at that location. And I've just got to figure out a way to plumb this into this because they don't exactly make adapter fitting. So I'm just going to have to uh, come up with something there. But we'll get it done. Okay, folks. I will see you in the next segment. Okay, folks. Welcome back took a little break there uh, just a few moments ago I bored the hole for this drain now this will come back off because I do have to fiberglass all of this but um, for right now I just got this temp installed so I can fit the drain tube and get it bent the way it needs to be bent let me step around my fan here it got hot again it's over 100 degrees and it is the middle of September wonderful don't you just love Texas weather? But anyway, uh, no, I don't. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I need to uh, take my heat gun here and uh, heat this plastic pipe up and put some bends in it to get it to uh, make a straight run into this fitting right here. And I did figure out a way to uh, adapt this to the uh, stainless steel drain. So right now it's just going to be a lot of trial and error. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to use this heat gun right here, heat it up, bend it, check it until I get it to where uh, this piece will go straight in. Because right now, yeah, you can see it's kind of at an angle right there. And I need to get that bent just a little bit more uh, so I can get a, this to go in, just make a straight shot going into this fitting right here. All right, folks, I will see you here in a moment. All right, folks, welcome back. And that is how it's going to look. Did end up with just a small kink right here, but it's not going to hurt anything. That that tube's still wide open, not an issue. Yeah, it will end up, you know, with kind of a low spot right here, but that can't be helped, you know, just because of the angle of the transom and having to make that turn right there. Um, that will get the majority of the water out of that forward compartment if it ever. Uh, does take on a lot of water and then uh, we have to flush the tube with compressed air or something to get the remaining water out of it if, if it ever comes to that and uh, that's something you would take care of after a fishing trip but uh, that's it that's the whole drain line installation right there all I have to do now is get this bonded in at these ribs and then um, of course the panels they'll lay over the top of the of the, uh, the drain line right there all right uh, it is hot man I mean it got it went back to July again so uh, I might just call it a night right there call that a uh, you know good day's work and then uh, hit it again tomorrow and Monday all right folks thank you for watching hey folks welcome back Finally, it has cooled down enough now I can get out here in the garage and start recording uh, these devotional segments again. July and August, uh, man, it was just so hot. Uh, it was like sitting in an oven out here. So I took a break from uh, the devotionals for a little while. Just uh, uh, like I said, it, it was just so hot out here. It just, it just felt like you were sitting in an oven. And so um, with the weather uh, cooling down a little bit now and cooperating a little bit better, I will uh, resume recording my uh, devotionals out here in my uh, recording studio slash garage. But uh, anyway, the devotional tonight is from the fifth chapter of the book of John, from the Gospel of John. Jesus was speaking to a group of Jewish men who had confronted him after he had healed a man who had been lame for 38 years. Jesus responded to their criticism by saying to them, my father is still working and I am also working. Well, this infuriated the Jews. It made them very angry because with that statement, Jesus declared himself to be equal with God by calling God my father. 
Well, he ruffled some feathers there, but uh, he made no attempt at an apology. Uh, he didn't try to uh, smooth things over. Instead, he sort of ramped it up a little bit. He went on to affirm that he was indeed equal with God the Father. He pointed out how he was going about the work that God the Father had sent him to do here on earth. Next, he told them, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to anyone he chooses, thereby establishing that his authority was equal to that of God the Father. He then makes an even stronger affirm affirmation regarding his equality with God by telling them that the Father has given all judgment to the Son so that people will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. And anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father. In other words, he's telling them that he and God the Father are one. And then Jesus gives a, a, a short but very profound summation of the entire gospel. And this is from John chapter 5, verse 24. Jesus said, I assure you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Now, when Jesus said, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me, he is talking about the sort of belief that leads a person uh, when they hear the gospel, when they hear the words of Christ, uh, when they hear the word of God. He's talking about that sort of belief that leads a person to make uh, that life-changing decision, that life-saving decision to place his or her trust in Jesus Christ. It's the sort of belief that leads a person to change the way that he or she is living. It's the sort of belief that brings about the desire to please God, to, to live in obedience to God. And that's what it means to believe in God, and that's what it means to be truly saved. Now, that's especially true when we talk about the desire to please God, to be obedient to God. The desire to study God's word and uh, to obey God's word and live as Jesus taught us to live, uh, that gives us the assurance that our salvation is real, that it's genuine. Now, are we always going to do those things uh, perfectly? No. Uh, you know, we're going to have our slip-ups from time to time, and I've certainly had my share of slip-ups. But a truly saved person will always seek God's forgiveness and will always seek to be restored in his or her relationship with God. And anyone who has crossed over from death to life uh, will desire uh, that fellowship with God through their relationship with Jesus Christ. And the good news is that relationship is anyone's for the asking. Folks, that is all I have for you tonight. As always, I thank you for watching. And in all things, as always, to God be the glory. Thank you and good night.